This is Heart Rhythm TV. Welcome back to the Ice Image of the Month. This is Dan Aliesh from Denver, Colorado. Our goal with the Ice Image of the Month is to disseminate advanced ice imaging techniques. I'm joined today by Dr. Hani Demo of Swedish Hospital and North Shore University Health. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So, you know, our episode today is going to focus on using the ice catheter in the left atrium, okay? Or, or actually left-sided ice. And it'll be broken down into two separate um, episodes, one involving um, the, the atrial imaging, the next involving the ventricular imaging, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna get started. Let me load up our first video. Okay, so you know, this is our first image we'd like to discuss, and thank you very much for a great image. So in this video, you show your transeptal puncture as well as putting the ice uh, catheter into the left atrium without fluoroscopy. Would you mind walking us through the steps for doing this? Sure, yeah. Uh, so I once I performed a transeptal puncture and I have my uh, wire across, I kind of dilate the septum with the uh, sheath and with the dilator and the sheath. And then I pull the dilator and the sheath into the right atrium, leaving only the transeptal wire and once the transeptal wire in, in view, I apply an anterior tilt onto the ice catheter. And what, what it will do is just basically, we'll take the tip of the ice catheter and bring it over the wire. And once it's parallel, I start seeing the shadow of the wire. And then I know that I am parallel because the shadow artifact will tell me that I'm parallel to the wire. And then I will advance my ice uh, slowly into the left atrium, making sure that I lead with an echo free space, meaning that I am not going through a wall or I'm not, you know, uh, perforating. So uh, my other question for you is, you, do you use a long sheath um, to, to, to put ice in the left atrium? Uh, I, I use a long sheath for all my ice. I use a, a, a sheath that will basically end in the IVC uh, and that Whenever we, whenever I get access, it usually the ice go from the left groin, uh, from the left femoral vein, and will be a long sheath into the IVC, trying to bypass any uh, anatomic variance in the uh, femoral area and the femoral and iliac. Uh, so I do, yes. Okay, and is it like an SL1 or using a gillis or what do you use? Oh, you, are you talking for a transeptal or for the ice catheter itself? Uh, for the ice catheter. So, so like, for instance, some people will put it through an SL1 into the left atrium, or it sounds like you're using a long sheath to get it up to the IVC, but then manipulating the catheter across, right? Oh, right, right. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't use an SLO or SL1. No, no, just a, a long sheath, just basically to get me to the IVC, but I don't use an Agelis or, uh, or anything for the ice catheter, no. And you do it without fluoroscopy exclusively? Without fluoroscopy, yes, yes. I've been doing uh, all my ablation without fluoroscopy for since 2015, actually. All right, fantastic, fantastic. So our, <clears throat> our next image is a, a nice sweep of the left atrial structures, okay? So uh, Dr. Demo, can you talk us through manipulating the catheter, what are you looking at, and all the different uh, landmarks? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, then once my ice catheter and the left atrium I am doing very similar maneuvers to what we do when the ice in the right atrium, which is basically small clockwise rotation, which is gonna take us from different structures uh, uh, through different structures in the left atrium. Uh, the only difference is you don't have the intra, if you have a thick intraatrial septum, it's not in the view anymore. If you have uh, intracardiac devices or, or leads, it is not in the picture anymore. So basically it's just a clear view of the left atrial structures. And uh, I usually, the way I do it, it's more of like a clock phase, uh, if you would. So by 12 o'clock being the patient nose, uh, three o'clock will be the patient ear, six o'clock will be the spine. And the ice catheter has ridges uh, on it. Uh, any, any kind of ice catheter, whether the St. Jude ice catheter or the Akinov ice catheter, it has ridges. And when all these ridges are aligned, it tells you the ultrasound waves, which direction is going. So if I do my ice catheter, for example, uh, once I'm in the left atrium, I'll just get all my ridges aligned and start at five o'clock. That will take me to the pulmonary vein views, the left superior and left inferior pulmonary vein. If I counter slightly and bring it to three o'clock, that will take me to the left atrial appendage view. So usually when I enter the left atrium, 
I start from three o'clock and that will be the appendage. Make sure there's no clots. We've already you know, uh, confirmed there's no clots before we perform the transeptal, but at least it gives me an idea how is the left atrial appendage anatomy in terms of proximity to the left superior pulmonary vein. Um, and then clock, performing clockwise maneuver will take me from three o'clock to five o'clock. I start seeing the pulmonary veins performing further or the left side pulmonary veins performing clockwise maneuver from five o'clock to six o'clock will show me the posterior wall and the esophagus. And then I perform further clockwise rotation from six o'clock to seven o'clock that will show me the right inferior pulmonary vein. And then from seven o'clock to eight o'clock that will show me the right superior pulmonary vein. And then if you continue clockwise rotation coming back to 12 o'clock, you're gonna see the anterior wall of the left atrium and the aortic knob, then you made the 360 degree uh, rotation. Okay, great. And then, um, you know, this reminds me a lot of imaging um, from the right atrium, with the exception of, you're right, there is no septum, there's nothing obstructing the view, the image is so much more clear. Um, my question, two questions for you. Number one, um, are you doing this for all of your atrial ablation procedures or only maybe patients that have a thick septum or some sort of poor imaging views? Uh, currently, I'm doing it for all my left-sided uh, 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 atrial ablation, uh, RF or cryo. Okay. Um, so you'll have a mapping catheter, you'll have an ablation catheter, and you'll have an ISAT catheter all in the left atrium. Correct. Correct. And it's all... Uh, in, in the case of cryo, it will be through the same transeptal puncture. I don't perform a separate transeptal puncture for it. And in, in the case of RF, if I have you know two transeptal puncture, one for mapping and one for uh, uh, RF catheter, then it will be through one of them. Through one, I don't perform a separate transeptal puncture for the ice catheter. Okay. Now um, the other question I have for you is, you know, I, I hear people people doing this. To me, it may seem counterintuitive, but ruling out atrial thrombus by putting ice in the left atrium is kind of, for me, it's like, oh, what if there's a thrombus and I'm putting, you know, things in there, but do yeah. you do that? Or, you know, how do you do that if you do? Yeah. So, you know, and, and you're absolutely right. I, I usually, uh, I would not perform a transeptal puncture uh, if I, I have any doubt there's a left atrial appendage. However, if the patient does have a PFO, I will carefully advance my, my catheter through the PFO and look for uh, a left atrial appendage thrombus. Uh, my favorite view for the left atrial appendage thrombus, if I'm in doubt and in, in using, uh, using ice, I put it in the RV um, inflow outflow and also advancing it into the pulmonary artery uh, and into the coronary sinus also. This will give us, you know, pretty much almost like orthogonal views of the left atrial appendage and you can exclude clots uh, that way. I agree completely. Okay, we'll go to our next clip. So the next image that we have here is cryoablation guided by left-sided ice. Now there is an adage that you need fluoroscopy to, to do cryo, but you know there may or may not be a paper out there showing it's not necessary, a little self-promotion. <laughs> but um, tell me about using left-sided ice to, um, to guide your cryoablation. So, you know, for, for, for cryo, if, if you're going to go with zero fluoroscopy cryo, you're really counting heavily on the color flow Doppler and the waveform um, and how coaxial, of course, your sheath and balloon and the vein all together. Uh, and for the left-sided veins, uh, if you have a, a nice septum, that might not be challenging, but for the right-sided veins, it becomes a little bit challenging regardless. Uh, now, you know, currently I advance my eyes into the left atrium for all my, my cryo um, ablations, and it just gives me a very clear visualization of how my uh, uh, sheath is aligned with my vein, how the balloon is aligned with the sheath, and also the color flow Doppler. I don't get dropouts in the color flow Doppler, so I can trust it more. And combining all the information from the color flow Doppler along with the waveform, uh, then I can, you know, you, you can perform uh, your procedure without the need for fluoroscopy successfully. So clearly, in each one of these images here, you're showing segmentally each um, each vein here. Correct. And so when you're imaging the right side of veins, tell me about ice catheter manipulation. Are you, you know, where are you? The ice catheters in the, you know the mid left atrium and you're imaging backwards. So tell me uh, a little bit about kind of looking and getting good images there 
uh, for the right side vein. Yeah, so for the uh, uh, right side veins, it is pretty much basically, as, as we talked earlier, I usually just clockwise my ice catheter until the ridges are all aligned to seven o'clock. That will be my right inferior pulmonary vein. And if very deep in the left atria, in the left atrium with the ice catheter, I might miss a septal leak around the balloon, if, especially if there's an inferior leak or a septal leak. So a lot of times what I end up doing, especially for the right inferior is, I uh, uh, pull my ice catheter slightly uh, uh, back actually towards the RA. If, if you, in the, in the frozen, uh, um, in the still image that you have there, there are two dots on the top of the screen, the proximal end and the distal end of the- um, uh, Up here, right? Up exactly, yes, that's yeah. exactly right. The proximal and distal. So a lot of times my uh, uh, proximal uh, uh, point will be, pretty much in, in the septum. I can see the septum coming in and out of view. And that mm -hmm. will allow me to make sure there is no inferior leak into, into the, in, around the RIPV. And that tends to be the most challenging part in RIPV in cryo is an inferior leak. Uh, so just by pulling the ice catheter slightly in, I can see that very well. Now, when I go into the right inferior, right superior pulmonary vein, I, a lot of times I uh, advance the ice catheter slightly in and exactly as you see there, and then applying a posterior tilt that will give me more, uh, slight posterior tilt, will, will give me more a, a longitudinal view of the vein and I can assess any leak around the balloon that way uh, uh, more accurately. I think it's an important thing to, to talk about, you know, with ice, and this is something that took me a, a bit to realize, you know, right up here, you know, is, is what's in front of what's anterior to your probe. And you have a proxim, uh, proximal and distal uh, kind of, marker there. And so really thinking about ice and manipulating the catheter in that way will really help you. Okay, so uh, um, now we're going to move on to uh, RF guidance. So our next video segment, you know, if you're kind of going through, you know, RF guidance, different lines, let's talk through that and different locations. Yeah, so here, uh, again, the ice in the uh, lift atrium, I applied a little bit of anterior tilt and you, um, you can see the, the, the first image was the uh, RF catheter uh, at the level of the carina. And you can see here how thick the carina is. And that gives me assurance if I want, I, uh, you know, I, I, I always do high power, short duration, uh, but sometimes, you know, if you want to go a little bit longer duration, you can see how you're affecting the tissue. Um, and you can see also edema formation and, you know, even a steam pop right before it happens, you have few milliseconds that you're going to see it happening on ice. But you know, I, the, the the thickness and the quality of the tissue, you can appreciate it so well uh, on a clear ice image like this, for sure. So I think it's important to just kind of go over a bit here. Look, you have your you know, the anterior to your probe. You have no septum. You have a beautiful clear image. You have the crown. You have the veins, and you actually jump the gun. Uh, appropriately on, you know, your RF, I wanted to ask you kind of using ice and looking at the thickness and titrating power. So you say you're using high power, short duration. I'm going to let it run now. But um, so what is your power titration? What, what are your settings? What are you doing? Yeah, so I, I use 50 watts and I'm constantly moving my catheter based on the tissue characteristic changes that I see on ice. Um, a, a lot of time, uh, you know, I, I'll get the good impedance drop, you know, more than 10 or 13% impedance drop. It depends if you're working anteriorly or posteriorly. Uh, but ice guides me a lot in terms of how long I'm going to stay, or I need to stay longer, or I need to come off earlier, even before reaching my parameters. I just let the tissue uh, kind of recover and come back to the area again. So you're, you're not targeting, targeting necessarily an LSI or an ablation index. You're just or even a time you're watching ice the whole time. Is that? I, I, yes, you're actually, I'm watching ice. So I would say like 80% of, of my, uh, uh, what I'm looking at all the time will be ice and the, the, the catheter movement and 20% will be the mapping and the, and the lesions. And a lot of times, you know, they align actually, like if, if the tissue characteristic, if I see the tissue is edematous, I know that's a good lesion and I will look at the mapping and I, I, I will see that I reach all my targets. Okay, um, now, I think you have another nice application here of, you know, left side accessory pathway, mitral annulus. Talk a little bit about that for me, please. 
Yeah, so uh, uh, this is uh, was a left lateral accessory pathway, and you can see very well here that the 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 contact between the catheter uh, and the annular or the the annual part of the the atrial part of the annulus, um, and you can see how close you are to the appendage. So you will appreciate if your catheter jumps on the appendage, and this way you avoid any potential perforation or anything like this. And again, you can appreciate the thickness of the tissue, and you can titrate your duration and power. Uh, based on the changes that you see on the uh, intracardiac echo images. And here you're on the atrial side of the mitral annulus, and sometimes you can go on the ventricular side using ice, et cetera. Um, now, another question I forgot to ask you, when you say high power, is that 40, is that 50 watts? What are you doing exactly? Uh, 50, watts. 50, 50 watts. 50 watts. All right. Perfect. Okay. Well, you got to leave them wanting more. So this is the, this is the end of episode one. Episode two will resume with ventricular uh, guidance with left-sided eyes. Thank you. Thank you.